Welcome and thank you so much for joining us for this month's episode of Boys and Girls Clubs Clubcast. I am your host, Marissa Gleckler, and I am joined today by Mr. Bob Cantor, who is going to be talking to us a little bit about workforce readiness programs happening in our clubs, um, as well as our upcoming Chuck Hill Golf Tournament, um, and just some of the amazing things that we have going on at all 25 locations throughout the county. Um, so, Bob, first, I always like to ask our guests how you initially got involved in Boys and Girls Clubs and what kind of made you want to stick around? Well, it all started out with a friendly game of golf with uh, Charles Cuomo, who uh, was the acting principal of the high school. My two sons graduated, Port St. Lucie High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got involved playing golf, and he talked to me a little bit about a golf tournament that Boys and Girls Club runs every year. And I thought it was time for me to start getting involved in something, being that I was retired. Needed something to do to fill the time, and uh, he introduced me to the Boys and Girls Club, uh, brought me around to a couple of the organizations and a couple of the, the, the main locations in Port St. Lucie, and uh, I love working with kids. I love helping people, and uh, it went from there. We, we got involved with the golf club committee, and I've been on the committee ever since uh, I joined, which was about six or seven years ago. Okay, so six or seven years, and you've gotten to kind of see the tournament change and the organization grow. A little yes. bit. Um, was the golf tournament itself what kind of got you hooked, or was it seeing the kids? Seeing the kids and, and, and being able to interact with the kids and seeing what a great job the Boys and Girls Club does in molding these kids mm -hmm. to become our future leaders. And I got involved with the, well, not involved with, but I was one of the judges in the Youth of the Year oh. for the kids one year. And uh, it was amazing to see what these kids revolve into, and, and they just so enthusiastic about what they do and what the Boys and Girls Clubs does. And it helps the families in the community tremendously. Let's face mm -hmm. it, you know, people have some place to go. The kids need a place to go before school, after school, and the Boys and Girls Club fills that void. Mm -hmm. Well, Youth of the Year seems to be a trending response on this show. Whenever I ask, like, what is the moment that got you hooked? Mm -hmm. It was for me, too, because I was originally on the Youth of the Year committee, and that's how I mm -hmm. got involved and eventually started working for Boys and Girls Clubs. So okay. that's a pretty uh, inspirational event. Yes. Um, but speaking of inspiring, we recently had our annual awards luncheon where you were given one of the Volunteer of the Year awards. Mm -hmm. uh, so our CEO, Will Armstead, presented you with that award, and that's a pretty prestigious honor. I guess. I don't know <laughs> how I deserve such an honor for what I do. I would like to, what I told Will once I received the honor was, I guess I have to step up my game. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to spend more time and do a lot more for the Boys and Girls Club. I do have the time. I travel a lot, but in between those travel times, I do have plenty of free time to do things. So hopefully I will get involved more. Uh, I've recently been asked to be on the board of directors. I've gone through my preliminary uh, talk and uh, interview and we'll see what happens if I do or not but uh, either way I'm looking forward to helping a lot more with the Boys and Girls Club and doing as much as I can in the future. Well we're really grateful for you and anything that you do do for our kids and for our clubs and that awards lunch in itself was pretty stacked Amazing. with um, some incredible individuals. Yes. We had uh, Congressman Mast uh, video in to give mm -hmm. a congressional award. That's pretty cool. I don't think mm -hmm. any everybody can say that. Correct. Um, and we also had our Youth of the Year, Mia, mm -hmm. present the other Volunteer of the Award, uh, Volunteer of the Year award, um, for her mentor for Youth of the Year. So that was pretty cool. And I think um, just seeing all those different community members come together and those big names and big faces, um, I felt like I need to step right. it up. <laughs> so. We had our state senator. Uh, Gail there, Gail Harold. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I've known her for many years. She used to live in my neighborhood, and I can remember the days when she first started uh, campaigning. Uh, she'd come door to door and introduce herself and meet people, and that's how she became uh, very well known. And she's uh, very good for us, the Boys and Girls Club, being in the Senate. So it helps us mm -hmm. tremendously also. It was cool to hear her speak, too, to the yes. um, people in attendance about her passion for our literacy programs right. and reading and things like that. Um, I think it's always interesting to see that different individuals care about different components of the clubs. Exactly. And it's very interesting to, you know, sometimes you don't even think about literacy programs, for right. example, and then someone like Gail brings it up and you're like, oh, we do that. Listen to the news today. Literacy in this country is, is 
in the forefront of education today. Mm -hmm. Our children are not learning math the way they should. They're not reading on the skills they should be reading. And uh, I, they blame it on a lot on the pandemic, but I think a lot has to do with the different rules and new regulations they have in the schools. Mm -hmm. We need to emphasize more on the kids for learning, reading, and math. I mean, it's very, very important. We're falling behind all the other countries in the, in the world over that, so mm -hmm. very important part of it. I don't know how much you know about our uh, 21st century learning centers. We have um, four, I believe, within our 25 clubs, two at high schools, one at an elementary school, and then one at one of our clubhouses. And those programs, like, very heavily focus on the STEM, or STEAM, I guess they call it right. now. Um, and the reading and things right. like that. So, right. um, but it is always interesting to hear those different perspectives from the community. And um, I think that emphasizes the importance of all these different individuals getting involved because they bring such unique perspectives. Correct. Everybody has their own little unique part that they share with the club and, and it helps the kids in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think too, um, by having those different people come in, they share different career paths. Right. Um, and a lot of times our teens especially, they kind of feel like, well, I'm just gonna graduate high school and I'm either gonna go to college or I'm not gonna go to college. Mm -hmm. And they don't really know what else is out there. Correct. Um, and I think that the community coming together offers a lot of those different perspectives and different um, paths to learn about. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think that it's important for St. Lucie County volunteers and businesses to get involved specifically? Well, the kids know that they need to know that there are different opportunities out there beyond high school and college. Mm -hmm. Like you said, a lot of kids are either geared to go to college or not. And I was involved in an event many years ago where they brought a bunch of professionals in, in different trades and businesses from the community uh, into one big group to talk to the kids. And at the time I was in the floor covering business and I was able to get up to talk to some of the kids and tell them, you know, we have a wood installer who installs wood floors. He makes about $100,000 a year. And this is going back probably 10, 12 years ago. And the kids' eyes opened up and they didn't realize that there were some good paying jobs out there. Mm -hmm. So all the other businesses told the same stories and it gave the kids something else to think about beyond high school. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids that I spoke to, when you asked them what they wanted to do, first question was, I want to play professional football, or mm -hmm. professional basketball, or baseball. Well, the odds of them doing one of those is very slim, so they need to know that there are other alternatives if they don't make it into professional sports. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were there to teach them and to talk to them about. So. Yeah. Well, now, too, their, their answer is like a TikTok dancer or oh, an geez, influencer, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but they also um, have opportunities to stay within St. Lucie County, which I think is really right. important. Um, a lot of times what we try to do is provide them with skills that match up specifically with employers in our right. county to kind of keep that talent right. here. And with the rapid growth of the county, um, you know, we feel like that's really important. Right. That's one of the things we do with the golf tournament. We have what they call the Champions for Kids oh. sponsorship, which this year... Uh, Don Green Electric is the champion for kids sponsor, and uh, he's going to take one or two of the kids or even a couple of the kids and bring them to one of their warehouses and show them what it's like to be an electrician oh, wow. and teach them that they can make upwards of $100,000, $150,000 a year as an electrician, which may, again, lead some of the kids to go into a different trade uh, when they get out of high school. And they're even interested in mentoring one of the kids or using them as an apprenticeship to become an electrician. And that's so important because um, a lot of times when you hear about different career paths or when we're teaching teens and kids about different career paths, we don't really talk about the specifics and what, right. what money you might be making or what um, trainings you can right. get now, you know? And I think that when we provide that information, we're taking it a step further, like making it actionable yes. for teens today. Right, letting them see it right up front. Yes. Well, what's involved. The workforce, one of the things that we spoke about with uh, Sean is that uh, every month they have a different person come in and talk to the kids. And mm -hmm. uh, the last couple of months they've had people from the fire department come in. They've had people from cyber crime from IRC uh, College come in and talk to them about their phones, about how they got to be careful on their phones. These yeah. are simple things that kids don't think about. They play with their TikTok and chat, whatever. I don't even know half the things on the phone. Yeah. But they've got to be very careful because this information can be used against them and against their family in, in the future. They need to know certain things like this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if we've gotten too far ahead of it with the workforce. Have I no, gotten? No, no, okay. yeah. Uh, you know, they teach them simple skills. They teach them soft skills. They teach the kids not just about being an electrician or a plumber or a carpenter, what to do in an interview. Mm -hmm. Dress properly. 
be on time. They teach them how to look people in the eye and talk to them one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one, shake their hand firmly. Uh, simple skills that the kids need to learn before they even go into the workforce. These are things that they yeah. need to know. You, know. you can't go dressed like a in a blue jeans and their cutoffs and, you know, I mean, just look, walk in there like uh, they're, they're meeting one of their friends. I mean, right. it's very important to teach them the skills before they even get a job and, and what is required of them. Um, a lot of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of adults could even uh, really use this Learn information. Learn from that, yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. some of these career speakers, especially the forensic, um, you know, science and right. things like that are interesting, so interesting for me even. I like to sit in right. on them because and I'm like, okay, I didn't even know that these right. things existed. Right. Um, so I know that they've been enjoying that this summer. And um, just different partnerships that have taught, you know, men how to tie ties. and. Right the females kind of how to dress appropriately mm -hmm. and things like that I think are so important right um, and things that you can apply to any job right people don't think of the workforce or, or teaching kids about skills and, and about jobs is involved with stuff stuff like this but that's the most important stuff they need the basics before they even enter the workforce mm -hmm. uh, and that's a lot of the work that they do and and being able to introduce them to people in particular fields like the fire department police department they have the canine unit coming to the schools mm -hmm. show the kids the canine dogs and, and maybe some kid will be interested in becoming a police officer in the future and working with canines mm -hmm. uh, like i said the cybersecurity they have all different groups coming every every week or every month just showing them different aspects of different trades and different fields they can possibly get interested in. Now, go back six or seven years when you first started getting mm -hmm. involved with Boys and Girls Clubs. Did you see that same emphasis on workforce readiness and how no, have you seen it I, grow? No, I've seen it grow. I mean, I've seen it really, this is the first year that I've really gotten involved with the workforce. Uh, they just completed a project where the Boys and Girls built three different benches, mm -hmm. uh, very large benches, uh, and they have their plaques on them, who built it, and Boys and Girls Club, and who it's donated to. And we just recently donated a big bench over to the Veterans Home in Tradition, and they were very, very honored and very happy to receive the bench. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, originally they were thinking of putting the bench behind one of the units, uh, not by the main building, and when we brought the bench over, the director of the uh, Veterans Home was so impressed and she said, I'm leaving it right out front by the front door so everybody walking into the VA can see it because she said it's a beautiful bench. Mm -hmm. We had probably 20 veterans from the home sitting out front when we made the presentation the morning of, and uh, they were just thrilled to death the fact that we were there and we were thanking them for what they did, and we were there to present them with a new bench, which we wanted to honor them because mm -hmm. of their service. So I gave a, a service coin to one of them, thanking them for their service, and the previous day when we delivered the bench, and the morning of, he came out and he saw me. He said, oh, you're the man that gave me the, that coin. He said, I wanted to tell you. He said, I went right to my room and I put it in my safe. He said, I was Aww. so happy to receive that coin. So it's something else that I like to do. I buy these service coins and it says thank you for their service. And it's a very pretty coin. I, have, I, I keep two in my pocket at all times. Yeah. And if I see a serviceman from the VA or anything, I try to give them a coin and make their day happy. That's pretty so, awesome. And that yeah. ceremony with, with the bench was really cool. Yes, um, I think was. everybody really appreciated yes. that. That whole facility is really cool, beautiful. by the way. Absolutely beautiful That was facility. the RDR Copus yes. Veterans Museum. Yes, RD Copus. Yeah. yeah. And they, I think they recently made plans. If they haven't done it already, they're going to be donating another one to the Veterans Park on Veterans Memorial yes, Parkway. Yes, yeah. So. And I think they've yeah. got other builds kind of in the works, like dog houses. They're building dog houses, yes. They're building some dog houses that are going to donate. And uh, I think he was telling me some more benches. We're going to be building a few more benches and giving them out also. Do you so. guys know when you're going to start working on those? Uh, pretty soon. I yeah. mean, Sean was saying they're going to be, they, they're in corroboration with the, the actual Builders Union, St. Lucie County Treasure Coast Builders Association, okay. and the ac actual carpenters that come and help the kids build a bed. They don't want the kids working with the electric saws and things, so yeah. they do the cutting of the wood and they help the kids hammer together and they stain it and everything else. Yeah. And the benches are beautiful, so they do a nice job. Yeah, they when they were building the benches the first time around, um, they were out there like putting love and labor mm -hmm. into those benches, sanding them and all that, and um, I would go out there every like 30 minutes or so and be like, oh man, wow, they really... <laughs> they were really getting into it. They really enjoyed doing what they did. That's, yeah. that's part of teaching them, you know, some of the aspects of the workforce and what they can do to help the community itself. Give I back something from what the community is giving them, which mm -hmm. is a, an important part for the kids. They want to feel like they're being appreciated, but they also want to feel like they're being a part of the community and doing something and giving something back. Yeah, and that's a big part of, I'm glad you said that, because that's mm -hmm. a big part of what we try to teach, especially our teens, because um, the community pours so much into right. these kids and, and into the clubs. And so we do try to um, make sure that 
those who are giving to us right. are really giving to the whole community right. because we send our teams out um, to volunteer as part of the workforce readiness right. programming um, to volunteer with local nonprofits like the Humane Society. Um, they, I know they were just at Heathcote Botanical Gardens, right. the food bank. Um, and so it's, it's really cool to kind of see this, this, you know, love going both ways. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. This partnership. Um, and we try to make it so that if you're supporting us, you're supporting the entire right. county. Right. Um, so I think that's really cool. And I think that we've taken on our teens interests and our young members mm -hmm. as well. We've listened to them and, and if they're passionate about animals or if they're passionate about fashion or, right. you know, whatever it might be that we understand that and we try to plug that in to the speakers right. or whoever. Try to get somebody to talk about the particular subjects they're interested in. Yes, exactly. Correct. Because like you said, you can't all be right. pro athletes and influencers, right. although we might have one or two. Who you know, knows? We will. We have already have. I mean, we have one that came out of the Boys and Girls Club, Michael Brantley. Oh, yeah. The center field of the Houston Astros. And he doesn't live too far from here, right? He's, Not far at all. He, yeah. lives in, he lives in Palm City right now. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and we also um, work with uh, career source um, for summer internships as well as other local um, businesses and things like that to try to plug in mm -hmm. our teens for internships and job opportunities and um, all of our teens that are involved in the summer program getting a, they get a stipend um, mm -hmm. so I don't know how much Very you nice. know about that but they if by participating in these even just by being at the club and doing the dress for success like you were saying right. where they dress up um they get a stipend that they get to take home so not only are they in a safe place but they're bringing home a but now check. they're in the workforce slightly <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> it's well, their introduction and, and they're earning it too i mean they're working in our kitchen um our older mm -hmm. members serve the uh, breakfast and lunch and all the meals to the younger members um and like it's very important for teens to be out right. getting a job but instead right. of going and getting a job where they might not be supervised or mentored you know we have them doing that in our clubs right. so all that to say that that is exactly what this year's chuck hill golf classic is supporting yes um so let's talk about that a little bit because that's a pretty big event yes it's a very big event it's gotten bigger every year our goal every year gets a little bit higher and every every year we seem to manage to reach it and uh surpass it uh our golf tournament's a little bit unique uh most golf tournaments, they have you a little breakfast or they give you some sandwiches for lunch. Or We used to have a dinner afterwards or actually a big luncheon at the Club Med. But today uh, and from now on, we, we are, have been using the uh, golf course up in North Fort Pierce, Fairwinds Cove. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Friedis, who is a proprietor there with the food, has been very gracious. And he donates all the food and all the drinks for us. Uh, our course, when we play, we have three different holes that have food on them. Mm -hmm. So as you're playing, you're, you have breakfast before you start, uh, you get onto the third or fourth hole and you have something else to eat, hamburgers and hot dogs, mm -hmm. we have some pulled pork in another hole, we have, you know, drinks everywhere, and, and you know, so you're never thirsty, we always keep you hydrated, whether it be with water or else, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's pretty unique in the fact that once the tournament is over, all of the raffles and all of the prizes that we give out have already been listed on a form which we give to you before you get to your last hole so that you can check your tickets to see if you won. If you mm -hmm. want something, you walk right up to the table, you pick up your prize, and you're on your way home. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't make you hang out for three hours waiting for prizes to be given out. Right. So it's, it's very quick. Everybody likes it. Everybody enjoys it. And it seems like every year we sell out sooner and sooner. Mm -hmm. uh, we limit it to 36 foursomes this year, and we've already been sold out for the 36 foursomes, and the tournament's not for another six weeks. So every year, I think we have to try to figure out how to try to get more for some yeah. more. I don't know, but it, it's, it's, we've got some great sponsors and some great partnerships in it. And uh, every year, the golf tournament is a reason for donating to a different section of the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. Some years, it's for building funds. Some mm -hmm. years, it's for the workforce. Some years, it's for some other aspect of the Boys and Girls Club. So we find the cause each year to use the money towards uh, and... Uh, Usually, like I say, we meet our goal and we're surpassing. So we work hard. Everybody that's on the committee, uh, we spend months before the, the tournament uh, organizing everything and trying to get everything ready and everything runs smoothly. Mm -hmm. And last year it ran very, very smoothly. So uh, not much more we can say about the tournament. Just keep looking for us each year and checking us out because we are one of the premier tournaments in the mm -hmm. 
yeah. in the county. Oh, so many people are constantly mm -hmm. saying it's their favorite. Yes. I think it's because it's just so laid back and like you were saying, there's right. food and drinks on right. every turn. And, right. Um, but what made the committee land on workforce for this year? Like, I know in previous years, like you said, right. it focused on building funds and things like that. But this year, it kind of switched for the first time in a few years. Well, I, I guess the need was there. Mm -hmm. I guess the workforce showed a need for it, some funds, and uh, building the benches and everything else. I mean, everything that they do with the workforce costs money. So I guess that was one of the reasons why they figured they'd switch it up and, and try to help one more aspect and uh, get where they did. Mm -hmm. So who knows what it's going to be next year. Next year will be another project. Somebody else will need some funding. And uh, the major funding, of course, goes towards helping the kids and, and running the centers. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are other other variables that go in between that. So mm -hmm. this year it was the workforce. And I don't know who made the decision. I'm sure it was part of the committee or part of the board of directors mm -hmm. uh, that I haven't seen yet. So we, <laughs> we shall see in the future. Well, it's a great thing to raise funds for either way. Yes. So that's very exciting. No matter where the money goes, it's always going to a good cause and it's always helping the kids. So. Yeah, we just uh, had a report come out internally that uh, says that 89 cents of every dollar donated actually goes directly right to the kids, so, which is, I mean, that's a huge... You can't say that about many organizations at all. If you look up online about even the big, huge, major contributors and the major organizations in the country, hardly anybody unless you look at the veterans organizations most of the money goes into the pockets of the people running the organizations mm -hmm. uh, the veterans if you look up online 90 percent or, or or right around there goes right directly to the veterans just like the boys and girls club 89 mm -hmm. percent that's an amazing figure yeah. it really is amazing to run this big of an organization at 11 percent of the funds is is incredible and it goes to the volunteers that work for the for the group Definitely. And I know, uh, going back to the golf tournament, that um, you've done a lot of fun things in the past. You've had um, beat the pros, you know, your typical mm -hmm. whole contest, things mm -hmm. like that. What kind of um, activities can we expect at this year's? We have a putting green, you know, closest to the, to the hole. And most of the time, somebody always ends up getting in the hole, but it's a, probably a 60 or 70 foot putt. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a what they call a shootout hole, which is a par three. We normally put the tee box pretty far back, probably about 185, 190 yards, mm -hmm. and uh, the hole is usually tucked in the left-hand corner where it drops right off after the hole. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be pretty accurate. Anybody who makes a birdie on that hole gets to shoot in a playoff for a prize. Uh, and it's like every other golf tournament, we've got the longest drives for the men and women. We've got the closest to the pin for the men and women. Mm -hmm. uh, and this year we also have a hole, it's a par five that uh, you get to move up about 200 yards on the hole so that you get a good shot at making an eagle. Mm -hmm. But the big, the biggest thing is, like I said, we have a good breakfast in the morning, we have mimosas, we have Bloody Marys, and then you get out on the course and then everywhere you go, it's like you're looking at another, another meal. It's like yeah. three times out of the golf course. So uh, we have a lot of good prizes. We have big prizes. We have a lot of small Chinese auction prizes. So there's a lot to give away, but there's also a lot of fun being had on the golf course. And you meet, get to meet a lot of people and socialize with a lot of people while you're out there. So it's a lot of fun all around. And tell me about this year's Fast Pass. Last year, every year before, we used to have a Fast Pass where you paid $50 and uh, you've got 20 raffle tickets for all the small prizes. You've got five tickets for the major raffle prizes. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, we've added a little bit of a, a little twist on it. We have four major restaurants in town uh, donating 50 $25 gift cards. Mm -hmm. So in each one of the super fast pass packages, which are going to cost $100 this year, the regular fast pass is $50, you're going to get $100 worth of gift cards from four mm -hmm. restaurants. We've got Kyle G's, we've got Meeting Street, we've got, I believe, uh, St. Lucie Draft House, and number four, do you remember number four? I'm trying to think what the fourth one is. Uh, I do not remember Kyle the G's, Meeting Street, uh, St. Lucie Draft House, and boy, my mind is a blank and right a now. And a mystery fourth a that mystery you're not going to want to miss. I will figure it out before the day is over, though. <laughs> yes. And so, um, so, per so, so basically golfers you spend can an, purchase that? Yeah, you're spending okay. $100 and you're getting $100 in gift certificates for four restaurants. And that'll so. get them raffles and stuff, too? And they still get their raffle tickets. Yes, everything else that came into the regular Fast Pass bag. That's pretty awesome. So, yeah. And then I know we also are, um, in August, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary yes starting august 5th so um because this event is taking place later in august we're plugging the 30th anniversary and yes. then we've got the coin yes. um i don't know if that's a secret 
but no, we've uh, got no. merch and yes. things like that that I don't know that we've, we've done in the yeah, past. Yeah, we've got some great things that the golfers are going to be getting on the course. We've got hats. We've got a ball marker, which is going to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. uh, golf balls, uh, logo golf balls. So there's going to be a lot of giveaways, too, that you're going to get in your goodie bag that they call mm -hmm. each golfer gets before he starts to play his round. And there also there is a couple of the club members in attendance as well, right? They're, oh yeah. They uh, welcome the golfers yes. and things like that. And I think one of the girls from the club will be singing the national anthem, and and they help out in the mornings, you know, serving things and uh, getting the tickets. And we have a lot of volunteers from Boys and Girls Club that are going to help us during the day on the golf course. And this is the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh annual golf tournament. That's yes. pretty crazy that the we're celebrating our 30th year and that the golf tournament has been around been for almost years. all 30 yes. years. Yes. What were we doing the first three years? So we missed know. out. Probably trying to get organized. I guess it takes a lot of organization to start a club like this and the growth over the last 30 years has been just phenomenal. I mean to think about how many kids I, I don't know the numbers, maybe you do, the number of kids that we service in St. Lucie County. I know that we serve um, roughly 4,800 to 5,000 every day and then an additional 10,000 through outreach programs, mobile right. club, things like that. So Think about that. That's yeah. incredible, 15,000 kids being serviced. I think the other statistic that uh, we released recently was that Boys and Girls Clubs has served or impacted one in ten youth in St. Lucie County, which gotcha. is pretty amazing, but it just shows that there's so much more that we right. can be doing and so much room for growth and potential right. for um, for the impact. And we, we see teams like Mia, who was our Youth of the Year, um, come out of the Lincoln Park area. Um, we see her go and do these incredible things, and now mm -hmm. she's off to Embry Riddle and mm -hmm. just thriving, you know. And just to think of how many more Mias are right. are here right. um, every year. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of gems in our in our group, and uh, these kids are going to go on and make and do bigger and better things. And and hopefully, you know, we we have seen it already in the past where some of them do come back to help, and, and they do help us out tremendously. I just thought of the last restaurant; it's Tudor Fresco. There we go. How could we forget <laughs> right up the street Tudor here. Fresco? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank right goodness behind you us. remembered. Yes. <laughs> um, well, thank you to all of the uh, sponsors and donors who have contributed yes. to this golf tournament because that is going to be a really exciting event. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that with the plug of the 30th anniversary and the teams being there, it's a really, um, it's a really holistic it is. tournament for golfers to take part in. It is. Look forward to our gala in January for the 30th anniversary. It's going to be tremendous. Yeah, I think it's a call event. back to our stake and stakes that we used to do. Right. Um, it's definitely a more upscale event mm -hmm. happening at Mid Florida. Yes, um, a very so, upscale event. Yeah, more more information to come on that for sure. Yes, a lot more information. Look forward to it. Yes. Well, um, just to recap uh, everything that we talked about because it was a lot. Um, we have some incredible workforce readiness programs going on in our clubs. We have 25 clubs throughout the county serving children ages six to 18. Um, we have 17 school-based clubs. We have STEM projects, workforce readiness, you name it. We have something for all youth and teens in our clubs. Um, and then we also have our Chuck Hill Golf Classic, the 27th annual tournament coming up on August 26th, August 26th at Fairwinds Saturday. Golf Course. Um, so if you're out there and you would like more information on how you can get involved in our clubs, in our tournament, um, please visit our website. It is www.bgcofslc.org. Uh, thank you, Bob, and we welcome. will see you all next month for Boys and Girls Clubs Clubcast. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great day.